Well, tonight is going to be a night like you've never experienced before. I am looking forward to it because normally right after I get done, we jump into worship, right? I mean, that's what you guys are used to. That's what we do 95% of the time out of live announcements and we go into worship. We're not doing that tonight. Uh, we have a special guest here tonight, one of my dear friends, someone who I love to death. Some of you have already heard him speak before um, because maybe some of you knew him at a former student ministry or maybe some of you guys go to Greer High. Any Greer High people? Yeah, sweet. Um, so you'll notice um, this guy is about to come up and speak. But anyway, he's pretty amazing. He not only uh, is a former student pastor, but he's one of those guys who does anything and everything, even breaks up fights. Like, he literally wow. broke up a fight a couple hours ago at Greer High. Um, so he does it all. But I'm thrilled for him to speak tonight. And I want you guys to sit on the edge of your seats. I want you guys to experience tonight like you've never experienced before. Uh, so if y'all could do me a huge favor, what I would love for you guys to do, if you could stand your feet and give a huge round of applause for my man Travis Dix. Hey, uh, tonight, uh, actually all day today, uh, if you like vanilla ice cream, that Dairy Queen is giving away uh, free ice creams all day long. And it has to be vanilla. I don't know why it's vanilla. Uh, but so when you leave here tonight, if you want to go to Dairy Queen, they, they will give you a free ice cream. You just have to ask for it. Okay? You have not because you asked not. So if you go to Dairy Queen tonight, you'll get free ice cream. Um, for the past two weeks, uh, you guys have uh, talked about being uh, in a valley, what it means to be in a valley. Tonight, my assignment was, what's the purpose of being in a valley? And I started praying and uh, reading some scripture, reading a certain book, and started um, kind of just asking God, God, what is it that you want to do? Maybe something different tonight that I've never been a part of, and maybe these students haven't been. So I, I shot um, Hux a text and, and said, hey, what do you think about doing this? And probably for the past couple of weeks, you've heard this question, or it's been said that every single one of us are in a valley today or tonight, or you're probably getting ready to be in a battle, okay? Or we, we've been in one, we, we may be exiting out of one, where some of us, if we were very honest with ourselves tonight, and that's what I want us to be, okay? I want us to be honest, I, I, I don't want us to be talking, I want us to turn around, God, and look at me up here. I want us to turn around, I want us to pay attention, and I want us to see what God only can do. Okay? Because I believe with all my heart, you can do something really special and really neat tonight. And when we walk out of these doors tonight, we'll go, man, God, you did something really cool tonight. And a lot of times, especially with our students, we, we get comfortable in, in seeing God do some amazing things. And I never want us to get comfortable in seeing God do amazing things. Because sometimes there are students, some places, they never get to see it. And I know you guys are fortunate, you see it a lot. But tonight, that's my prayer. It's because I believe that some of us are either leaving out of that valley, we're in that valley. If we're honest, we could probably all say, yeah, that's me. I'm, I'm in that valley tonight. Or you're getting ready to get into a valley. So um, this past May, I remember... Um, I have coached football at Greer High, and I remember going up for spring practice. And one of my dear friends, who's the coach, one of the coaches there, um, was walking up the field as I was coming down to the practice field. Some of you know him, and uh, he, had, he was on the phone, and uh, he just grabbed me and, and told me to come with him. So we, I went with him, and we went into that little ticket office, that little ticket booth right before you get up into the track area right there. And uh, he was on the phone. He put him on the speaker. And he was on the phone with his doctor. And he was expecting this call all day long from his doctor. And as he got uh, off the phone with him, he just looked at me and I looked at him and uh, he told him that he had cancer. He said, Travis, I don't know what to do. 
And being in ministry, I try to give him the, the Sunday school answers. I try to give him the, the answers that I think he wants to hear. But it was really raw because it floored me as much as it did him. Because I was hearing it for the very first time. As he was hearing it for the very first time of what was getting ready to happen. And the surgeries that, that was getting ready to happen to him. And it, it just got real raw all of a sudden. And I started crying, and he started crying. And I said, Coach, I, I don't know what to say. There's really no words to really say. So, so we just kind of embraced each other, just cried together. And I realized for a while, he's going to be in a valley. And if him being in a valley, I may need to be in that valley with him. And then come... August, I get a call from my dad, and he tells me that my mom had an appointment with a doctor, and uh, she was diagnosed with leukemia. And I, I sat there for a minute, and I thought, man, you know, I, I want to, so I asked him, I said, can I speak to my mom, you know, mom, and he put her on the phone, and I started talking to her, and some of the same words that I said to Coach Perry were same with, some of the same words that I spoke to my mom that particular afternoon when I found this out. As I was speaking to her, I said, you know, Mom, I want to understand what it's like. I don't have cancer, but I want to understand what it's like to walk through the valley with you. So what is the purpose of that? Because I sat there and prayed for Coach Perry in a hot, small ticket booth asking God to heal him completely. And there's no doubt in my mind that I believe that he can. But as I sat there and prayed that months went on and more surgeries was ha were happening with him and I even started going, God, where are you at in this moment? And I know some of you are, are starting to get real spiritual. I'm trying to say, I never asked God where you're at. I'm too good for that, right? Well, I, I wasn't. I'm not. And even to this day, with my mom and the leukemia that, that she has and the stage that she's in, daily I'll say, God, why have you not shown up and do what only you can do in this moment in her life? Why is it? Why is it that you're doing that? So I went to the book of Habakkuk. And in Habakkuk, there's a lot going on, more than uh, we have time to go into tonight. But in uh, chapter 1, verse 2, it says, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence and you will not say? And tonight I wonder, have any of us ever felt like that? Have, that we've cried out to God and, and we've said, God, where are you at in this valley? Where are you at in this situation that's, that's in my life and, and he's nowhere? You, you, you look around, you try to get real spiritual, you start coming to church, you start reading the word, and it, it's just not there. You don't see him, right? Or am I the only one that, that, that's like that? And in times like that, because I love worship. I love sitting back there a little bit ago and, and listening to the band uh, you know, practice, and I just, I love worship. I love getting in my car and, and worship. That's one of my favorite things to do in the world. And as I sat there and I thought and I prayed over this particular scripture, I thought, you know what? I'm probably, if we're, if we're honest, probably, there's probably someone other than me that's hurting tonight. Probably. Okay? And we're just being honest. It's just us. And I'll be the first one to raise my hand and say, man, I'm hurting. I'm going through some stuff. Just because I'm up here holding the mic doesn't exclude me. Just because this band is getting ready to come up in just a moment doesn't exclude them. Man, there's times where I just go, God, where are you at in this valley? There's probably, probably someone tonight here that you're saying the same thing. God, where are you at? So tonight we're going to have some different sections and different sessions of times where we can just worship. And we can understand that in James 1, 2 through 4, it says, consider it, this is crazy, consider it pure joy, 
whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. In other words, it's saying this right here. You know what? I know the hell that I'm going through. I know the valley that I'm going through. But even though I'm going through that, yes, I'm going to praise God. Amen? Yes, I'm going to praise Jesus through this storm. Yes, I'm going to give him my praise. Even though I'm walking through that battle, and I'm wondering... Is there anyone here tonight that in that valley that you're going through, the valley that, that, that we see, are you willing to say, you know what, I'm going to praise him tonight. I'm going to praise him. So here's what I want to do. Why don't you just close your eyes for a moment, bow your heads. And very starting off, before we start off, I wonder if we were to get serious tonight really serious, not goofing around, but really wanted to get serious with God for a few minutes. He said, you know, even though I'm going through this mess in my life, it's not right at home. Mom and dad's not getting along. It's not right at school. I'm going through this issue. I'm having this problem. You name it. And I, and I, I deal with students every single day, and I know some of the the things and the, some of the stuff that goes on every single day. And I know that, that you go through these valleys. But I wonder tonight if we would take just a few minutes and say, even though I'm in this valley, I'm going to give God praise tonight. Lord Jesus, here in just a moment, we're going to have an opportunity to worship you even though we're in a valley. Even though we may be hurting, we may even be hollering out to you and screaming to you and not understanding why we're going through what we're going through, but we're still going to have a heart of worship, and we're still going to give you our praise here tonight. So, Lord, during this song, I pray that this will just be the beginning of what you're going to do here tonight. First, in your beautiful name, I pray.
So in Habakkuk 1, uh, Habakkuk is, you, you can have a seat just for a moment. This can be kind of back and forth, but we're going to make it work. Chapter 1, he's wondering. And there's somebody, probably, tonight, you're doing the exact same thing. You're wondering. You're wondering, God, where are you at? I said that ticket booth with Coach Perry. I was on the phone with my mom, and I did. I wondered that. God, I know that you can. Are you going to do this? So tonight, the first thing is that we wonder. We just sang a song. It's says, God, yes, I'm, I'm going to believe you. And probably if I was going to ask you, how many of you truly believe that God can do anything he wants to do? And, and every single one of you, see, some of you already raised your hands. I didn't ask you. I said, what if? But if I said, hey, probably everybody would. Why? Because we're here in church, right? But how many of you truly believe that? Because sometimes we do wonder that. I do. I wonder that. But the second thing that we're going to look at from Habakkuk um, in, in chapter 2 is the fact that sometimes we have to wait. We wonder, but then sometimes we also have to wait. In chapter 2, verse 1, it says, I will take my stand at my watch post, and my station myself at the time. Now look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. So we have to wait. You know what? I hate to wait. I hate it. And maybe why I love to go to Chick-fil-A is you don't have to wait long. You know, you go through Chick-fil-A, but if you go to Burger King, you have to wait a long time, right? Especially through the drive-thru. I just hate to wait. And sometimes the question is, when are you going to come through, God? You know, with my mom, that's, that's some of the things I've been asking. God, when are you going to come through for my mom? Because the purpose of our valley that we go through sometimes is for us to wait. But there's a couple things that we can do when we're waiting. Now, a lot of times nowadays, you know, when we're waiting in line in a car, uh, and, you know, in a car to get food or something, we get on our phones. But here... When we're waiting on God, He wants us to do three things. The first thing He wants us to do is He wants us to listen. He wants us to listen to Him. And sometimes just because God becomes silent, it doesn't mean He's not saying something. Just because God becomes silent, it doesn't mean He's not saying something. Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not going to harm you, not going to do anything bad to you, plans to give you hope and plans to give you a future. But for this to happen, you may have to wait for it. You may have to wait for that. So as we're waiting, we're going to listen. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to write some things down. We're going to write a couple of things down. What I love to do is I have a journal here. I actually cleaned it out today at school. And it's there's nothing in here now. Um, I get this paper. It's actually, you get it free at school. And so I would re, I re put you know, as much as I need to in here. And I write down a lot of stuff. I write down prayers. I write down students' names. I'll even write down people that, and this isn't real spiritual, and Hux, I'm sorry, but there are people that, believe me, I don't like some people. Maybe that, that doesn't make me spirit. I don't know. But there's even people I'll pray for because I don't like them. I say, God, change my heart. But I write everything in here. Me and my wife, Jody. I love my wife, Jody. And, man, I write things in here about her. I write things about my two boys in here. I write things that I struggle with. And 
I'll write prayers down in here. And then I'll go back and read some of this. And it's amazing how God answers some of my prayers. And I don't even realize it because I haven't gone back and looked at the things that I've been praying for and some of the stuff that I've been looking at. So I, I'll write them down. So while we're waiting, we want to listen. We want to write some things down. And I even, I write things down that, that I'm expecting God to do. Not because He has to, or, but because I just know He's God. And I know that He can. So I'll give God praise even before I see it sometimes. And then it's really cool to go back and look and see that ahead of time like that. It just blows me away. And then the last thing as we're waiting, he'll even tell us to wait some more. To wait some more. That's tough to do. But while we're waiting, what God wants us to do is he wants us to wait well. Because we get frustrated when we wait, right? We get mad when we wait. You see, God wants us to wait well. And the reason he wants us to wait well it's because God is bigger than anything that we can ever imagine. And if we know that God's getting ready to do something really big in our lives, and He says, hey guys, I need you just to wait for just a moment on this. If we truly believe in our hearts, if we truly believe that God is bigger than we can ever imagine, if He's really bigger than we can ever think of, we go, you know what? I will wait for that. I'll wait for it. I will wait for it. If any of us have ever been to a fancy restaurant, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get some of that good food out, right? Because they have to prepare for it. It's the same thing right here. God is wanting us to wait. Sometimes it's frustrating. But I promise you this. If we truly believe that God is bigger than what we think He is, and we don't put Him in some little small Sunday school box, and son, and for him to be some kind of little genie to us, that if we say, God, I know you're going to do this. I know you're going to do it because you're bigger than my prayers. You're bigger than my imagination. You're bigger than anything I can imagine. That if that makes me and allows me to wait for just a little bit longer, then I'm going to be the first one to wait. So with your eyes closed and your heads bowed for just a moment, we're going to prepare again for worship. And I want to ask you that very question. Do you truly believe tonight that God is bigger than you could ever imagine? That He's bigger than anything that we could ever, ever imagine?
So Habakkuk in chapter 1, he was wondering. Chapter 2, he was waiting. And sometimes that waiting is tough. In chapter 3, we're going to read in verse 1. It says, a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, according to Shigadoth. Now, and I may be saying that wrong, and it's not a bad word, um, but I started thinking, I may not really talk about it because I don't want people to, to go on and go, hey, guess what the guy that talked about? But it's what it means. I looked it up, and there's a lot of different definitions on it. Shigadoth. I'm not going to have you say it because I'm afraid of what you may how you'll butcher it up like I'm probably doing. But it's a musical direction for a congregation to sing a song with wild, passionate singing, rapid changes of rhythm, high-spirited praise, and vigorous enthusiasm. And I wonder tonight as we've kind of gotten to this moment can we truly say that because I mean really if we're honest we have all are in those valleys and if we're really honest we, we've been wondering probably we have to wait and here we're going to have to maybe even wrestle with God and singing and praising and, and lifting the name of Jesus the praise before the provision the praise of, of who God is because here in the scripture Habakkuk was praising God before he did anything that he wanted him to do and it actually is quite opposite Habakkuk was praying to God that, and they lived in an area that was becoming very rough and they started worshiping idols and there was corruption and there was just a bunch of nastiness going on. So Habakkuk was praying out and, and just crying out to God and God wasn't answering him. Actually, he was doing the opposite of everything that Habakkuk was praying for. God would do the opposite of, of what he was asking for. But in the midst of those things, Habakkuk started praising and he was praising God before anything that he wanted him to do. Before the prayer was even answered, he, he started praising God. This is not, I'm praising you for what you have done. Because it's very easy to do that, isn't it? It's real easy to stand here and go, hey, I'm praising God for for." This that's happened in my life and the way that God has moved in my life and saving my best friend. And, but what if it doesn't end up that way? Because we don't live in a, in a sitcom world to where after 30 minutes, after tonight, everything in your life is going to be perfect, right? We're going to get back home and mom and dad is not going to really be jihadin and get along. Or we may not even be mom and dad. You may be hurting from a bad relationship. It may be a sexual relationship that you're hurting from. It may be something going on in your life that is uh, an addiction that you cannot get over. And tonight we're going to be, man, it's going to be really neat. We're going to experience Jesus in the highest. And when we get home, man, real life's going to hit us again, right? And for Habakkuk, it's not praising for what he for what's been done because it may not have been done yet. We still may be having that sexual abuse. We still may be having that addiction in our lives. We still may be having a bad relationships. We still may be having trouble at home. There still may be something there in our lives, right? But we give God the praise before it's even done. I'm going to praise you for who you are with everything within me. When we're in the valley, we're going to do a couple things. One of the things that we'll do is when we're in the valley is that I need you to remember. I need you to remember the good times. 
And that's what Habakkuk is doing. He, he's remembering some of the good times. I remember in 1997, I was very young to the student ministry. And I took a group of, I think it was like 13 or 14 students. And uh, we went to a camp that a good buddy of mine was uh, leading worship. And it was out in the middle of nowhere. We stayed in these nasty cabins. And we had to like walk from here to Ingalls to our to take showers. And man, it was horrible. Oh. One thing I remember about that camp is one night uh, after worship, the message was over. The band was finished uh, singing, and, but they were still up here because guys that, these guys are crazy talented. But one thing I know about music guys, man, they're a little different, right? Not bad different, but they're a little different. So after the service was over and after everybody was kind of gone, not everybody, but some, a lot of people were gone, they started doing this right here. Just playing. And y'all do that all the time, right? It's great because they learn it all the stuff all the time. And they just started playing. And next thing they know, this this lady that, that got up and she just started singing. It wasn't planned. It wasn't on the schedule. And there was nothing going on. But man, worship just started breaking out. And we started experiencing God like we've never experienced God. This was one of the last nights. It wasn't even planned. And I remember that. So I get into worship sometimes, and, and y'all have been there. The band's really not with it. The speaker really isn't getting it. We've been there. Now remember those times when even though we may not be on the mountain, and we're in that valley, I remember those times when God showed up, and I'm like, man, that same God that can do that, man, He can do it again tonight. He can do it again tonight. So we remember. You know, I've seen you do it before, and I believe that he's going to do it again. You know, that'd make a good song. But I've seen you do it before, and I believe that he's going to do it again. So we we'll remember those times. And then we also, we're going to embrace those times. We're going to embrace those times as well. I'm not praising Him for, for the what, but I'm praising Him for the who. Because of who He is, not because of who I am. I have a, uh, two boys. One is in seventh grade. They were in middle school. And uh, his name's Hawk. And a couple of years ago, probably when he was third grade, fourth grade, he broke his arm playing baseball. And uh, he broke it in several different areas. And I, I'm not a doctor, so I don't, I don't know how he broke, or you know, the different areas. I just know there were several bones in his arm that were broke. So we, we took him straight to the emergency room. And as he was in the emergency room, man, he was screaming. He was going ballistic. My wife, Judy, who I love dearly, she was going crazy, going ballistic. And finally, I had to tell him just to kind of walk away and leave. And the, the doctor had to set one of the bones back. So in other words, he had to break it again so that it could be set. And as he was telling me this, I was cool with it. You know, I'm like, okay, do what you need to do. And then the Hulk, on the other hand, he was not okay with this at all. And, and he started just screaming and going crazy. And the doctor looked at me and he said, Now, Dad, what I need you to do right now is I need you to grab a hold of him because we got to get this done. I said, Okay, that's not a problem. Now, in fourth grade, Hulk wasn't um, that uh, big and I could kind of manhandle him. I can't get any more, but I started manhandling him and, and he started just wrestling with me like I've never seen him wrestle with me before. I mean, just wrestling because that doctor had his arm and he was literally breaking the bone again. But as he was breaking that bone and as he was wrestling with me, his daddy, with his arm that he was grabbing a hold of me with, he was embracing me. And I realized at that moment, I thought, you know what? There are times when I can wrestle with God but I can also embrace him. 
And tonight, that may be you. Tonight, you may be wrestling with God. And you may be struggling with God. But I want to ask you that you embrace Him tonight like you never have before. Because here's the bottom line. We need Him. We need Him in our lives. That particular night in the ER in Greenville Memorial Hospital, Hulk needed his daddy. And he was wrestling with me. And he was going ballistic and going crazy and saying things. He might have said a bad word. I don't know. But he was just going crazy. And he was wrestling with me. And although he was wrestling with me, I could feel his arm on the back of my neck embracing me as well. So tonight, here's what I want us to do. In this song that we're getting ready to sing, I want us to sing that we need God like we've never needed anything else in our lives. Like we need God like we want that, that first drink after a hot day and we want that Gatorade that touches our lips and we just quench that thirst. And God can do that for us here tonight because some of us are wrestling with God but although that we're wrestling with God we're also wanting to embrace Him and in this song right here we're going to have an opportunity to sing out and say God I need you here in my life tonight Lord I need you in my life tonight so let's stand and let's give God praise and let's acknowledge the fact that we truly need Him tonight
greatest signs of strength in our lives is when we ask for help. One of the greatest signs of strength is for us to say, hey, I, I need you. Know these leaders are always available to you. I'm going to always broadcast that, always. Because you guys Yes. 